Mario opened a door after climbing a long stair in his dream, another world spread before him and he heard a voice call for help to be freed from a spell. After awakening, Mario went to a cave nearby and to his surprise, he saw exactly what he saw in his dream. Press start button. Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Super Mario Bros. 2! Uh, otherwise known as Super Mario Bros. USA in uh, Japan because as many one, actually pretty much everyone knows, this isn't actually the original Mario 2. This is Doki Doki Panic for the Famicom, reskinned and re-released because they realized it would sell more. And then they re-released it in Japan under the USA title because they realized it would sell more. And it did. Doki Doki Panic has long been forgotten. Anyway, uh, you might notice one thing's a bit different if you haven't played this game before. Uh, jumping on enemies doesn't work on anything in this game. Uh, to damage enemies in this game, you need to pick things up and throw it at them. What it be can be anything. Pow blocks, Koopa shells that occasionally you get from actually uprooting the vegetables, the vegetables themselves, or even other enemies. Uh, notably, you do, I think, jump a little lower and run a bit slower when you're carrying an enemy, but it doesn't really matter in the long run. Uh, for the most part, though, what you're looking for is to be picking up the vegetables, because not only can there be occasional Koopa shells and such in there, and bombs, uh, but there's also the rare one-up, uh, different shaped vegetables, which are usually just different weapons. And occasionally there is a formula, but we'll get into that eventually. I got a Starman there, which is something added for the Mario version of the game over Doki Doki Panic. And uh, that appears when you pick up five cherries. Uh, cherries otherwise are just kind of plastered throughout the level there for you to get. And this is a formula. Formulas have one specific use. You drop them down and a door appears, and when you enter it, you enter subspace. Subspace occasionally has mushrooms, which will raise your life count by one. However, you can also pick up plants while in subspace in order to get coins, which are used at the end of the level during a little mini-game. Uh, there's generally one to two mushrooms per level, though they try to get a bit trickier before they hide them later on. Uh, cause the thing about subspace is you're stuck on the screen that you appear in. Uh, for instance, in a scrolling uh, screen in particular, like the last one, if I were to throw the formula down in one spot, I could only move around in this in the visible portion of the screen that I threw the screen down, uh, the formula down in. So th that's a pretty important thing to note. However, notable, uh, because of sections like this, it's worth noting that see these ladybug enemies. I know they have a name, but uh, I'll get it eventually. Uh, more or less, you can jump on any enemy in the game and not have to fear being damaged. Either way, at the end of almost every level lies our good old friend, Birdo. Birdo likes to spit eggs at you, in which case you throw them back at them. Uh, three shots and they go down. There are three different varieties of Birdo, but we'll get into the later two varieties when we run into them. Grab the weird little jewel thing, and that's the end of the level. At the end of the level, you get into bonus chance, where you use the coins you find in subspace, to bet on slots for extra lives. If you get any three types of I icons in a row, you get an extra life, except in the case of cherries. Cherries, as you just saw there, you get one if it's on the far left, two if they occupy the first two spaces, and five if they occupy all three. And now we're heading into World 1-2 with Luigi because Mario USA slash Mario Brothers 2 has four playable characters. And let's get into their differences. By and large, every one of the four characters has three stats, sort of. Speed, jump, and power. Mario's balanced in all stats, basically. Uh, no outstanding abilities, but no real weaknesses because of that either. Uh, first off, we should probably talk about this. Notice how that door over there has a lock on it. We cannot open that. In cases like this, you need to look for the actual key, and often it's hidden in little pots like this. With these masks. Grab the key and one of them awakens. That is a Fanto. And they will stalk you to the ends of the earth. However, the moment you throw the key, they actually lo stop locking onto you. So a good strategy with the key is just to grab it and throw it, and then just do that over and over again so you get to the door. Alright, but well, getting back, Luigi is lower in speed and power than Mario, but he has the best jump in the game. Uh, he also, I think, is... Uh, he also has the extra ability of the flutter jump, where you might notice when he jumps, he kind of flutters in the midair for a little bit, feeling a bit floaty because of that. Toad has the highest speed and power, but the lowest jump. Uh, in fact, because of that, he actually relies heavily on this game's charge jump ability, where if you hold down on the D-pad long enough, you crouch so long that you start glowing, and that makes you jump much higher than you would otherwise. 
Princess Peach is... Well, Toadstool. Is an oddity. She has the lowest speed and power in the game, and uh, even a sl lower jump than Mario. But her st uh, her trade-off for that is she can hold the jump button, or you can hold the jump button when you're playing as her, to hover for a good three to four seconds, I want to say. And that makes getting through some platforming sections an absolute no effort act uh, activity. So if you're having trouble with some platforming sections, just use her. Although notable, I think you can only switch between characters in a level, in uh, in one level, uh, in the Game Boy Advance version, which was the original Super Mario Advance. In both the NES version and I think All Stars, you're stuck with that character until you beat the level. Don't quote me on the All Stars bit though, because I've actually played little, very little of All Stars this. Uh, I've played Advance a good bit and this a good bit, but very rarely just playing All Stars. Now, something I haven't mentioned is that the first level actually had a shortcut that completely obliterates the level, but uh, I'm trying not to use any shortcuts for this LP, just so we can see the full levels. And that's level one, too. It's nothing too special. Uh, by the way, I just remembered, uh, Hoopster. That's the name of the Ladybug enemies. Uh, that's been bothering me ever since I mentioned that, like, four minutes ago. Uh, for the most part, this game's levels are... I want to say they're shorter than the Mario 1 levels, but at the same time, the scalp is longer than Mario Brothers 1. Partially due to the reason of there being... Actually, wait, no, actually, no. The levels in this game are longer, there's just less of them, that's what it is. Because Super Mario Brothers had 32 levels, I believe. This only has 20. Uh, but a lot of them, uh, a couple of them can actually reach over the 5 minute mark. Also, I love this game's soundtrack so much. The overworld theme in this game is actually one of my favorite songs in, like, gaming history. Uh, and although, admittedly, uh, one of the main reasons I didn't do Mario Advance for this LP was because of the soundtrack. I cannot stand the Game Boy Advance sound chip with this. And so despite that game having a few extra bonuses, like the kind of a cute but kind of annoying voice clips and one different boss fight, I decided to go with this. Now, this formula is a bit special. Uh, cause, like Super Mario Bros. 1, Super Mario Bros. 2 does have warp zones. Uh, there's only like two, three, maybe four in the game, if even. And the way you get them is that you grab a specific formula and you go to a specific pot. So, for instance, if you had taken that formula and gone to the pot at the very end of the screen, and gone to subspace and entered the pot, you would have been warped right to World 4, which is a over halfway through the game at that point, actually. All right, now we got these mushroom blocks. These are essentially just mini platforms you can use. Uh, you can still throw them at enemies to kill them or even damage bosses in the cases where they show up there. But for the most part, they're just used to stack and make platforms out of. Although notable, uh, a good amount of times, if you're just playing as Luigi, you can skip a good amount of their challenges, either by just standing on top of one block or just screw, uh, saying nope to the entire area. Now, one thing I've never been entirely certain, certain, certain of the method of doing is killing the Phantos. Because I know there's a way to do it, but I'm just not sure of how to do it myself. Now, admittedly, uh, we're just gonna see a bit more variation in this playthrough than what I usually do for the game, because when I play this game normally, I am basically right, maybe 75, 25 Luigi and Peach. Because I find their increased jumps, or at least their jumping abilities, just more useful than anything else in the game. Toad's uh, pickup speed can be kind of useful at times, and as can Mario's admitted balance. But for the most part, mm, I just prefer to be able to jump over everything. Either way, at the end of any given last level of a world, you'll generally still find a pearl and the usual gate like that, which, by the way, I, that, 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 that's just weird. I don't get why the gate's like that. The gate will instead generally lead you to your actual boss fight for the level. In this case, the boss of World 1 is Mouser, a bomb-throwing mouse who loves to try and be random. Uh, the way you have to damage him is throw his bombs onto his platform and hope he stays in one place long enough for you to damage him. Uh, three shots is all you need, but that can still be annoying. Uh, something I should note, though, is that whenever something else is throwing an item at you, like Mouser's bombs or otherwise, 
if you actually stand right beneath them, and I, I think you may have to hold the B button, you can actually still pick them up just by having them land on top of your head. Which is a pretty good way to get through that fight quickly. And that's World 1. Uh, there are 20 levels in the game, but there's only 7 worlds. It's a weird mix of both being longer and shorter than Super Mario Bros. 1. So, that's a bit odd, but... I actually kind of like that level system. Very often you'll find yourself not getting extra lives from that. And now I'm going to bring in Toad for level 2-1, because 2-1 is the introduction of a couple of things. First off, get used to seeing sand. It's not the most common thing in the game, but you're going to be seeing a lot of it. Uh, as well as these snakes, which are very annoying, actually. They tend to just bob up and down and try to shoot stuff at you, but it it's just annoying. Uh, notable, though, uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the most common enemy in the game is those weird little get red and pink guys with masks. Those are shy guys, and there actually is a difference between the two of them. Uh, red shy guys will just walk forward not really caring. Pink shy guys are essentially red Koopa Troopas in that they will walk, but turn around to the ledge. Oh, and those are panzers. Panzers suck, uh, because not many of them move, but the ones that do are annoying, and even then dodging their fireballs is annoying in of itself. There's also a lot of quicksand in this game, which well, uh, does what you'd expect. If you sink down too far into it, you die. Although I don't think you have to sink to the bottom of the screen in the case of the quicksand in this game. I think you just have to barely go below maybe two blocks where your face stops being visible. Maybe? It's weird. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that you're going to be seeing a lot of desert themes throughout this game, and there's actually a reason for that. Doki Doki Panic was more so based around... An Arabian kind of setting, Arabian Nights. In fact, I think the game itself takes place within a storybook. So there's actually a reason for that. And notable, uh, most of the game's mechanics are carried right out of Doki Doki Panic. Uh, the characters, their differences. The only things I think were added for this game were I th the boss in 5 3 was changed, the some music was changed, as were some graphics like that. Uh, the gate face looks a lot more humanoid in Doki Doki. And the Starman mechanic, off the top of my head. There were a lot of graphics changes, obviously. For instance, I think the bonus minigame here was basically just a green screen in Doki Doki. But it's cool all the same. Although notable, in terms of who the characters are in Doki Doki Panic and their equivalents in Mario, uh, the main character in Doki Doki was Imagine, uh, who is Mario, balancing all stats all the same. Luigi was... Mama, which makes a certain joke make itself. Uh, higher jump still. Uh, the main difference between the two of them, actually, is that Luigi's jump was boosted even higher than Mama's. Uh, Toad still is repla replaces Lena, who, uh, Toad, uh, Peach, rather, didn't have Lena's floating capability for a while after this game until, I want to say, a license ran out, in which case the floating mechanic was reinstated in, I think, Melee onwards for her. And then Toad was Papa. Uh, and uh, Toad's stats in this game would actually eventually make a return in Super Mario 3D World, which I was glad to see because I love 3D World so much. Uh, now, something I should note about throwing, if you want to throw something just straight down, uh, you either have to come to a complete standstill and press the B button to throw, or jump and throw from a complete standstill. I find jumping to be a bit more reliable. Also, here's a funny little thing. Uh, you saw it earlier on. Whenever you enter subspace, your goal is to obviously try and find a mushroom. But there are times where the door will actually overwrite where it is. Uh, it's not that the mushroom's still there, it's just the fact that in order to actually see the mushroom, you need to jump. Uh, you can enter a lot of pots like that, by the way, seeing that reminds me. Uh, some of them have just mushrooms for you to f throw, some Koopa shells, some power blocks. A few actually have, uh... What's it called? Uh, one-ups in them, though, which is rare, but I guess worth it. And, uh, seeing that reminds me. Uh, a few moments ago. Occasionally, hearts will drop from enemies. However, it's not the fact that they drop from enemies, they actually rise from the bottom of the screen. I want to say that happens when you hit a certain amount of enemies. Uh, not in a row, just in total. But I've never been too sure the exact amount, plus it's not worth in the long run anyway. Also notable, uh, speaking of health, your health does not carry between stages. I think every stage, at least in the 8-bit in, uh, and All-Stars, 
I believe you still start with two hearts no matter what. Well, health. Which is a bit annoying, but I can understand leaving that challenge in. Either way, this is the introduction of Red Birdos, who we're going to be seeing fairly often from here on out. Red Birdos occasionally shoot out fireballs instead of eggs, which means you need to be a bit more on the lookout for what they're firing. Notable though, actually one of the biggest annoyances about Birdo fights is that when they shoot eggs, there's a chance that when you throw the first egg, they might fire another egg and thus have your fight uh, attack entirely invalidated, which is annoying. Although notable, as you saw there, there are times where you, if you carefully time picking up like a mushroom block or an egg, you'll get invincibility frames and completely ignore any attacks, which is surprisingly useful uh, during boss fights. I've never memorized the timing, but it's there. Either way, with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part two, we'll be continuing on in World 2 before heading on into future levels. See you guys then.